What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today we have another WWE horror action figure setup for you guys and this time it is the biggest horror action figure setup ever. Alright guys, so in today's setup video, we have constructed the largest horror action figure setup of all time. We've combined them with my WWE collection, and we have expanded it. We don't have just this one section filled up. We have both sections filled up, and we're going to take you guys through it. We have Jason Voorhees, Leatherface, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Pennywise, Big Daddy from Bioshock in this hoe, just because, I mean, look at that visual right there. Look at it. So in the spirit of Halloween, guys, with Halloween approaching very soon, I figure we got to do one that's bigger than every other setup we've ever done and we had to do it with all the horror action figures represented we do we, we do have some left out not gonna lie to you but we're gonna take you guys through this i mean we got the full thing set up i'm ready to take you guys through it i'm excited for it so with that being said ladies and gentlemen let's get into the biggest horror action figure setup ever all right guys so i guess we're gonna start off in this section of the setup and we'll start off in the very far corner over here first so our first part of the setup will come from jason Voorhees, guys just burying andrade underneath this pile of chairs and stretcher and stool. Uh, I just thought this was a cool visual. You have Jason just burying this man and, you know, just sort of uh, throwing him into this pile of stuff and before uh, you, you know what happens next. After that, guys, we come forward a little bit and you will see Michael Myers. This is the NECA Michael Myers right here from the Halloween 2018 movie and he has this bag over Kalisto's head and he is choking him out. I thought that was really nice. That is the bag from the All-Stars Jake the Snake Roberts, I think. I can't, I can't remember exactly, but I think that's the figure. And he's using that bag to his advantage and sort of just taking advantage of Kalisto there with the nice pose with the bag and you know Michael Myers is evil so he's using that bag right there and choking out Kalisto if we come just behind Michael guys we will have Jason and the Undertaker going one on one right here sort of choking each other out you know I thought the Undertaker could put up a, a little bit of a fight here so I have the Undertaker you know choking out Jason who knows who's going to win this battle right here but both of them are choking each other out you can see the mask has been knocked off of Jason and Undertaker and him are just choking each other there so I like this little visual of the Undertaker the dead man versus the dead man here. Comment down below who you think would win. If we come forward a little bit, guys, we have another Jason Voorhees, and it is part six right here, and he has the machete high above his head and Ultimate Warrior, obviously, on his knees begging for mercy, and I don't think he's going to get it as we can flip the camera around and take a closer look at Ultimate Warrior's face. Doesn't look like it's going to end well for Ultimate Warrior. Just to the right of them, guys, we do have, I, I really like this right here. This is the remake, the 2009 remake, Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees, and he's doing a body slam onto Jeff Hardy. You can see the agony on his face right here. Look at the agony of Hardy. He's doing a body slam onto this massive axe. Now, this axe came from some other figure. I think it's a really, like, a really big Part 3 Jason figure from Friday the, Friday the 13th, and I think that uh, I thought this was a really cool spot. You lay the axe upside, and then you do a body slam onto it. This would obviously kill the, like, can you imagine the pain just hitting the spine and just going into the back there? So I thought that was a really cool spot. If we had horror action figure wrestling, this would be a really sweet spot to do in it. So the body slam onto the big axe, onto Jeff Hardy, Pain and Agony on the face to the 2009 remake Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees. And we come back here, guys. We have the money shot of the whole setup. And this is Big Daddy from Bioshock. If you guys don't know what Bioshock is, it is a video game. And we have Big Daddy right here with his big hand drill drilling through the stomach slash chesticle of Seth Rollins. You can see the blood coming through the hole in the figure. I did have to put a legitimate hole in my basic, so give the video a like for destroying the basic figure just for the setup video. You have the blood licking out of the mouth of Seth Rollins and this is just a money shot, man. I just love that. I wanted to have him holding another figure and crushing another figure, but this figure while expensive and very nice and detailed, you can't really move his head sculpt and you can't really, like he's kind of hard to balance sometimes, so this was difficult enough just getting him up here, but I did want that shot there of Seth Rollins getting drilled and and uh, I, I would like to know your thoughts down below. God, that's a sick visual. And we come just behind that, guys. You will see Tiffany and Chucky in the Camaro car here driving. And you can't really see them because they're behind the windshield there. But if you take a closer look, you can kind of see what's going on. They're driving. And uh, Brock Lesnar, I, I don't know what this is. It's like a theme of our horror setups. Every horror setup that we have... Chucky always seems to get, attack Brock Lesnar. So you can see the fear on Brock's face as he's getting run over by the car right there. And if you read his t-shirt, what does it say? Here comes the pain. 
Uh, yeah, I think the pain is coming, Brad. He just got ran the hell over by a vehicle. Very much pain indeed. I thought that would work pretty nicely for the setup, so I wanted to include it. If we go just to the left of the Camaro, guys, you will see AJ Styles right here. And AJ Styles, he's screaming in agony, and that is because he is handcuffed to this wheelchair. He's sitting in the wheelchair, handcuffed, and then part two, Jason, with the bag over his head, is using that stick belt combination. I don't know if you guys can see this. But basically, in part five, Jason, or Roy, I should say, uses this stick and belt to like he wraps it around this guy's eyes and then twists the stick up. And you know when you twist the stick up, it like tightens and tightens and tightens. And before long, it crushes his face. So I have him doing the same thing to AJ here. But instead of his eyes, he is crushing his mouth. And his mouth was open. And I thought that would be a really cool visual there. So Jason has, has got the belt in AJ's mouth while he's handcuffed. Just brutal stuff going on here in the action figure horror setup. And AJ Styles is, is getting brutalized by Voorhees. If we go just beyond that, guys, you will see this. And we've done this, I think, once before in one of our setups. But we have the TV screen. If you guys don't know what this Leatherface and this Jason is, that's NES Jason and Atari Leatherface and they are from the video games. They made uh, NECA made versions of them from the video game. That's why they're all weird colors. So that's what they look like in the games themselves. So I have this TV screen behind there. You can see the green screen. It works as a, as a you know, like a monitor slash TV. And I just have them coming out. I don't know really what the hell they're going to do, but I wanted to use these figures in the setup just to add more figures to the setup. So I figured they could be coming out of the TV, some fantasy bull crap. I I mean, let's be real, none of these characters exist anyway. It would be cool to have them coming out of the screen and, you know, trying to do something. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, if we go to the back here, you will see another 2009 remake, Friday the 13th, and all this is is him just picking up Jack Gallagher and choking him out. I wanted him on top of the table because it kind of creates some depth. You can see he's higher up. If he was on the ground, it'd be kind of hard to see, but he's on top of the table, and I guess he's going to choke slam him off the table onto this pile that we'll get into in just a moment, but Jason is choking out Gallagher, and he's lifting him up because, you know, he's so strong and powerful, especially in that 2009 2009 remake. He was really strong, so scooping up Jack Gallagher and choking him out. Coming from there, guys, we have a little bit of a fight back right here. We have Braun Strowman, the monster among men, and he is, uh, he has taken advantage of one of the Voorhees. He has buried him underneath some scaffolding that, that tore apart. You know, he broke it all up, and Braun is yelling there. He was going, Braun, you know, celebrating that he took out Voorhees, but then another Voorhees came up behind him and stuck a machete into the side of his back there, and he, he wasn't noticing it. So this is like literal moments and seconds after getting stuck in the side with that, you know, that machete there from that other Jason Voorhees. So Braun Strowman thought he had the upper hand, but then, you know, he realizes, no, Brad, it's, uh, you're getting stabbed in the side. So Jason is getting in on Braun, and uh, I guess we're about to have a little fight scene. But that pretty much does it for this back portion, guys. We took out everything. I didn't accidentally knock this over, so I'm going to go ahead and reset that back up, just in case I need to take a photo of it. But this is, does it for this portion, guys. But remember, we have a whole other section over here. I'm going to move all the lamps because you can see that, you know, the lighting's not the best over there. I'm going to move all the lamps over there and so we can see it better and then we will cover the second portion of the setup. Alright guys, the lamps have been moved and we are moving on to our second portion of our setup. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First off, we have the Freddy vs. Jason, Jason Voorhees power bombing Bret Hart through this table. Thought that'd be pretty cool. Get some wrestling references in here. So we have Bret Hart about to get power bombed through the table there. Ultimate Edition Bret Hart versus the Freddy vs. Jason, Jason Voorhees from NECA. And it looks like Jason Voorhees is going to win this one, unfortunately, for Bret Hart. Coming down to the floor, guys, you will see Akira Tozawa. And we had this in our last setup, but this time he's knocked unconscious. You see the hole in his head right there. He got bludgeoned by the hammer by Michael Myers. This was in our last setup, but I didn't want to have Michael over here again, so I just went ahead and put a cure on the floor with the hammer laying side by side. So there's Tozawa on the floor. Coming right here, I really like this one. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the setup. We have Chucky, and you can see the blade in his hand, guys, and what is he reaching for? He is reaching for X-Pac's tongue, so he is reaching out for X-Pac's tongue, and uh, X-Pac is probably about to get his tongue cut out by Chucky there, so that is part of the setup here with Chucky reaching over. Knife in hand, scary, scary situation for X-Pac. Not, not looking too good, but I thought that was pretty cool. I wish he could grasp his tongue, but he can't, so I have him just reaching out there. Still a pretty good part of the setup anyways. Just beyond Chucky, guys, we do have Pennywise, and you can see the pole stuck through his head. And if you can look at Sting's face right here, look at Sting's face. Look at those eyes right there. He's like, oh, God in heaven, what have I done? So he's holding that other part of that pole that has went through Pennywise's skull, and he attacked Pennywise from behind. Probably not a good idea from Sting, but he's trying to lift 
live, man. What do you do? You're trying to survive and stuff. And then you look at Brian Pillman on this side. Look at the face. Look at the face. He's like, oh, God in heaven, too. So they're both just, they're terrified. I mean, it makes sense. I'd be terrified as well. But at least they're putting up a fight here. And I think they're the only people in this setup that are even have a chance at living, considering what everyone else is going through. If we come forward right here, guys, you will see something very interesting now. I don't know if everybody is going to get this reference, but you guys will see that we have the Freddy versus Jason, Jason Voorhees wandering around. And then we have the Part 7 Jason Voorhees from NECA, but it is the statue. And if you guys don't understand what this is, I'll explain it briefly. So pretty much Kane Hodder is the actor that played Jason in Parts 7, 8, 9, and 10. And for the Freddy vs. Jason movie that released in 2004, they really wanted to have every, all the fans, everybody wanted Kane Hodder, the actor that, that played Parts 7, 8, 9, and 10, to be the uh, Jason that, you know, portrayed Jason in the Freddy vs. Jason movie. However, they ended up going with somebody completely different. And so uh, I have Kane Hodder attacking that Jason just because he, he should have been that Jason. So that's just a little nod to that. If you guys are horror fans or whatever, I wanted to put that in the setup just for you guys. And that's genuinely how I feel. Kane Hodder should have played this Jason too. If we scoot them apart a little bit, I want to get this and make sure I can see their faces here. You can see Freddy Krueger over the top of Gold Dust, guys, and you can see the face of Freddy yelling and screaming, and then you can see the face of Gold Dust yelling and screaming, and I think that they are doing two different types of screaming and yelling because Freddy has obviously got the got the glove, and, and, and Gold Dust is pretty much in a helpless situation, so I wanted, you know, I had to put Freddy in the setup, so I have him over the top. I wish we had more Freddy's in our horror collection, but, you know, we, we need to get more of those accessory packs so we can expand the, the setups and have them more creative and do some crazier things. But for now, this is all we have. So we just have to roll with what we got. If we scoot Jason back again, guys, we're going to move back to the far back corner here. This is not a corner, you jackass. Michael Myers is stabbing Dude Love. And so I just want, I had to have Michael stabbing somebody. So he's stabbing Dude Love there. And you can see the face. Uh, Dude Love's kind of positive there. I mean, he's got his mouth open. So it's not exactly a smile, but he is, you know, opening his mouth like, ah. Yeah. Right into the into the side there with the knife. So I had to put that in the setup. Now we come forward. This is probably the most brutal kill of the of the whole setup, I would say. I would love to know down in the comment section below. Maybe besides Seth Rollins getting, you know, destroyed by Big Daddy. This one's pretty brutal. You have Pennywise and you have Matt Hardy on the stretcher right here. And he he is strapped down to the stretcher and he is on fire. So that is that is pretty brutal. I'd say that's probably the most brutal death by far compared to Seth Rollins. Those are definitely the two top. And uh, Pennywise is just over the top. I'm very terrible, very terrifying and horrifying experience to go through. And he is taped down. There's no way he can get out of there. And that's just horrifying. But I wanted to put it in the setup with Pennywise right there. If we go to the back, guys, you will see our new Halloween Part 2 NECA Halloween Michael Myers figure. And you will see that he is wearing the, the head sculpt that got shot in the eyes. That is legitimately a thing that happened in the movie. So why not replicate it here in the setup? He's chasing after Triple H and Triple H is pissed off. You know, he's, he's like, come after me, damn it. And he's getting, yeah, he's getting destroyed. He shot, he shot Michael in the face and he, he, he shot him in both his eyes there. So he's blind. He's trying to track him down and Triple H is yelling at him. So he has the gun in hand and everything. So Triple H is probably in the better situation maybe. I don't know. Definitely the most commanding here in the setup as far as the WWE figures are concerned. If we come forward, guys, we have another nod to a little Friday the 13th action. You will see here part five, Friday the 13th. Jason was not the killer of the movie. They tried to go with this little plot twist deal where Roy was the killer. You can see underneath the mask, it was a different guy. And I always hated that Jason wasn't the one to, you know, reveal that and kill Roy. So in this setup, I have two Jasons killing Roy and uh, taking out Roy because Roy in the movie actually fell out of a barn onto like some spikes and that's what killed him and, you know, revealed him to not be the killer. And I just always hated that. That's why I, I can't ever take part five seriously is because Jason's not even really in the movie and he's not even the killer. So I wanted to have Jason getting revenge on Roy here in the setup. If we come back here, guys, you will see Samuel Zane not strapped down, but I guess he's sort of, uh, he's, he's yelling, he's got Leatherface, you know, going after him there on the hospital bed, about to just chainsaw him up. You know, we always have to have Leatherface chainsawing somebody up in the setup, so that's what's taking place here, but Sami Zayn's laid out on the stretcher, and he's not strapped down like Matt Hardy, unfortunately. Matt Hardy's like, what the hell, Brad? I can be strapped down and set on fire, but you can't even strap down Samuel Zayn to get chainsawed. So, uh, it is what it is. And then to finally round off our setup, guys, we have this really dumb part of the setup, but it is funny. You have you can see the face of Pennywise here. He is pointing and laughing at Dolph Ziggler. And what is uh, Dolph Ziggler doing? But the same thing, pointing and laughing at Pennywise. So they're just kind of, you know, they're like pointing at each other and laughing and you know what happens next. 
I think Pennywise is going to take out Dolph, but I thought that was pretty funny to have Pennywise pointing at Dolph, Dolph pointing at Pennywise, both of them laughing, and, and that pretty much rounds up our biggest horror action figure setup ever. We filled up both portions of the backstage. I think we could probably make it one more time bigger if we wanted to, maybe top this one by adding more figures to the arena where the actual ring is, but I thought this would do for now, and maybe we can do that later on in the year, but I hope you guys did enjoy the biggest horror action figure setup ever. Please comment down below what your favorite part of the setup was. You know, you like the power bomb, you like the set on fire, you like the tongue grab, you like the big daddy part right here. Again, look how darker it looks over here without the lamps. Ridiculous. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching the setup. Hope you guys did enjoy. Again, comment down below your favorite part of it. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE and horror action figure videos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.